good morning to one and all present here uh, respected dean school of post graduate studies director directorate of natural resource management and the external examiner and our good friend dr pradeep kumar the principal scientist soil science from csk hpkv palampur himachal pradesh faculty members pg coordinator and student friends so today we have assembled here to witness the guest lecture on micronutrients in ensuring food and nutritional security by our external examiner so on this moment i welcome our dean director and the external examiner and the faculty and student friends for this uh, important occasion for the information of the external examiner our dean uh, school of post graduate studies is very kind enough and especially after the covid period now we are organizing the viva oc especially mainly on online and sorry offline um, moving from online to offline only in very rare cases uh, due to certain situations uh, it is exempted from the offline and also to have the expertise from the external examiners because each one of us will be having a specialization in the particular area to a particular state so that as a nation as a whole we can have a holistic idea of in one particular area or the subject so the knowledge will be transferred to the faculty especially to the student friends so in this concept this has been arranged so i welcome you one and all for this particular session thank you very much then i invite dean school of post graduate studies dr n sendin to offer the special address good morning so today's special guest dr pratik kumar so he came all along from palampur very high place chill place and really we are happy that uh, department of soil science uh, invited a external examiner from the himachal and uh, it is a very proud moment that you are here sir with us to share your experience uh, and dr shanti uh, my teacher the professor and head soil science and agriculture chemistry my colleagues siddheshri my senior uh, tyageshri and uh, all the masters phd students of soil science department and the director enorm so today we have lecture on the nutrition ensuring food and nutritional security because unless micronutrient whether the human or plant always suffer if you are micronutrient deficient then what humans suffer same way the plants are suffering so it is a important area now yesterday also your adg avil murugan is there uh, some of your students asked the question why to go for biofortified crops sir uh, we can fortify the nutrient or the food so people food science people are talking we can add some nutrient some way add then also it will fortify the food because all are prepared food the artificial rice they are making artificial many foods are making just add need and micronutrient then it become become a fortified food then the plant genetics or the biotechnologies the people want to change the total uh, system itself then they say that uh, if we genetically change the uh, gene response for iron uptake or the zinc uptake or the carotenoid then we can make it a bio fortified crops but many times uh, soil scientists always uh, manipulate the crop with the putting a more micronutrient and make it to available form then it became a fortified crops i can say that when you you know that which soil if you grow what is the nutrient deficiency but that's in terms of accumulation in terms of translocation many things uh, soil play a role if unless the proper condition is there then you cannot get the the nutrient may not be accumulated the only thing is the soil scientists always look on the soil uh, very few people working on the accumulation of nutrients in the 
grain or the forage, whatever may be. I don't know the reason, I don't know. But the nowadays the times come, you have to look on, on the how the nutrient, whatever the nutrient available in the soil, how it is translocated, how it accumulated, whether the accumulation is can be manipulated because other people are competing because micronutrient fortification, food technologies, genetics, many people play on that. Uh, so they know that how to manipulate the things, but anyhow, soil scientists now coming over there to change the things. So in this way, the, your lecture definitely, sir, the micronutrients in ensuring the food and nutritional security, how this micronutrient helps to uh, better micronutrient. People now, even the, now the, today, this year is the international year of millets. Uh, you can eat some millets and you can not worry about other micronutrient because it's always have many of the micronutrient. But unless uh, nutrition, uh, your analytical techniques has to correctly pinpoint that which nutrient is high and which crop, which one is, which one is the better, which part is better. So we, which, uh, among millets, which one is having high iron, which one is high calcium. So those things you have to, uh, soil scientists only analyzing the plant nutrient and they are telling that this is the right way. But still that direction techniques may vary. So this way you are today's talks are definitely will uh, highlight the students. Why to, uh, why to look on the nutritional security angle how this micronutrient is play a key role. So in that it is a great lecture and the topic which is chosen is also very relevant. Uh, many of their uh, questions that people working on uh, instead of plant soil side, this plant side, they work on the nutrients, then they have a lot of potential also there. So the soil scientists have come out some domain and move to the uh, much focused area now looking for the always because now affordable class now the people earlier days we whatever the food we give they will eat because we are very uh, uh, foods uh, only we look on the quantity of the food we produce now people look on the quality of the food and one few upper class people are the affordable class want i need this much micronutrient this much carotenoid this much uh, whether you have varieties or whether really if you say that whether really accumulated in the plant system so those questions are arising. Definitely your lecture will be an eye-opener for the students. So I thank once, once again for come over here, Coimbatore, and I have my chancellor vision also that you have to invite all the experts from all over India, whether it's a north or east or west, they should come over here and share your experience with their faculties and also students. This will make them more confident that when you say that certain concept, then what our teachers did when external comes and tell they say that oh this is right so this is uh, so this way your presence is a really valuable one thank you for visiting TNA user on behalf of Tamil Nadu Agriculture University and Vice Chancellor I am really uh, welcome you for this this lecture sir thank you now I invite uh, our director Dr B Balasubramanyam DNR to offer the introductory remarks. So good morning to everyone. Uh, very happy to be uh, with uh, my good friend for the last uh, 20 years. Uh, so I used to attend every time an Indian Society of Science Saints annual meeting. So he's uh, really I'm very happy. And uh, our uh, Dean at the School of Postgraduate Studies is always uh, kind enough to support our uh, directorate for all the aspects of the students' community, for the benefit of the students' community. So um, we have, we have many concerns we faced, especially for regarding the fellowships. We have university is giving fellowships to all the students. For MSc students, we are giving 10,000, and for the PhD students, we are giving 20,000. Uh, yeah, for all the students who are getting admitted in TMAU, they will be getting fellowship for the research program for one year. For PG for one year, for PhD two years. So that way also we have a lot of concerns in the department. Our Dean School of Postgraduate has helped a lot to have a meeting, brainstorming meeting, and uh, invited Vice Chancellor. And we have, um, uh, we have finalized the modalities and we give the fellowships to all students. So this way I thank our Dean SVGS. And uh, just I want to introduce our uh, my good friend, Dr. Pradeep. And uh, he, were all, uh, he has done all along in micronutrients. For his lifetime, he's uh, worked in micronutrients. The micronutrient is one of the important uh, uh, nutrient, you know, when you studied in your undergraduate and postgraduate 
that is a um, uh, the trough experiment so that is uh, we can uh, we have even a nutrient which is very small if it is uh, not available it will make the soil imbalance and it will not be available all the other nutrients will affect the absorption of other nutrients that is the micro is more important so the uh, right person uh, madam has invited as the external expert for the phd student she has also done the micro nutrients so this way he actually he has, he has his experience uh, vast experience in micro nutrients and he has been uh, uh, awarded many awards with respect to the micro that's more if i want to mention i think uh, about the uh, information of the uh, dean svgs he has got the uh, sn ranet memorial award for uh, micro nutrient research and uh, he has also uh, the indian society of soil science bhopal has given the micro nutrient uh, award for letter of appreciation micro nutrient research in himachal pradesh and academic excellence award and uh, Uh, APG Abdul Kalam Scientist Award in 2019 for the Society of Tropical Agriculture, New Delhi. Certificate of Appreciation and uh, uh, Palambur for contribution to the research project Micronutrients and uh, Second Nutrient Polluted Elements. As a principal investigator, which was conferred with the prestigious Chaudhary Devilal Outstanding ICRIP Award 2015. Outstanding Scientific Contribution Award by Indian Society of Indian Institute of Soil Science, Bhopal um, for the contribution to Micronutrients in Himachal Pradesh. letter of appreciation from dean school of post graduate studies because he has also contributed for the guiding he has guided six phd students six phd students here especially in the micro nutrient field of micro nutrients so he has also visited for his post doctoral program to south dakota state university the united states of america so this is the, the few uh, right is a right person to deliver the lecture with respect to the uh, micro nutrients ensuring food safety and nutrient security as our dean svgs has rightly pointed out that the uh, the not only ensuring the food security is alone will not be sufficient the nutritional nutritional security is more important uh, it is simultaneous food security so that is the way that uh, this year the international uh, millets year that where the millets is going to contribute for the nutritional security rather than the food security so with these few words uh, thank you very much for the opportunity given thank you so on behalf of the dnau and uh, uh, department of soil science i move i invite for extended examiner dr pradeep kumar to deliver the uh, thank you very much honorable dean school of post graduate studies <coughs> director nrm hod learned faculty and the students am i audible to all okay <clears throat> uh, very rightly pointed out by dean school of post graduate studies that uh, the you enrich the food stuff with micronutrients then why to do all this <clears throat> i am looking at the young faces Uh, we need to figure out whether the pizza is enriched or can be enriched with the, the micronutrients because the eating habits has altogether changed whatever we were using in our times probably that's uh, gone to not, not passed to kids they are not uh, doing so so to do so we need to rethink considering the line of action what what should be called the eating habits of the young generation who are uh, not using the food stuff we used to <clears throat> anyway thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity and uh, asking me to join it's it's my pleasure i feel honored to be a part uh, and uh, sharing my views about what we are doing the food and nutrition security means to us and the the individuals <clears throat> so i will start with what is food security uh, probably none of us has ever visualized the hunger so we are that way secure but ask those people who is moving with empty stomach so we we say there exists the food security when all the people at that all the times have the physical social as well as economic access to sufficient 
this is the underlying word sufficient safe and nutritious food which meets their dietary needs and food preferences for active and healthy life so in indian scenario probably one can think where we are <clears throat> and the components which decide the food security is its availability we say there is availability when enough nutritious nutritious food of sufficient quality is available to people for their consumption and of course it is impacted by the production distribution and of course the exchange we may or may not have the food availability we may we are having the food availability then if so then we should have the access to the food we say we have the access to the food when all the individuals or the households they are able to acquire sufficient food to be able to eat a healthy nutritious diet or have the access to sufficient resources which are needed to produce such food such as land or the other associated resources which are needed it is affected by the affordability the allocation and the preference <clears throat> the third component is the utilization people must have the access to a sufficient quantity and diversity of foods to meet their nutrition needs but must also be able to eat and properly metabolize such food and the, the governing factors are the nutritional value of food what we are eating is it really healthy one containing all the nutrients the health status of the individual who is consuming that food the safety of the food how it is prepared and how it is being consumed the fourth one is stability which is uh, uh, i i would cite an example the rise in onion prices changes the government in india that is stability one must be sure enough that in spite of all odds we are in a comfortable zone of having sufficient food that is stability right then comes the nutritional security of course nutrition was was there with all the components we say whatever we are eating that must be adequate nutritionally in terms of protein energy vitamins and minerals and it should be available to all household members and that's true at all times so for a hungry or empty stomach person it is the quantity not the quality so these are two aspects quantity and quality of food these are two separate terms <clears throat> so are we really comfortable in these two situations the food security as well as the national security probably no if no then what is happening this data is saying that one third of the global population is malnourished which is a reflection in terms of stunting vitamin and mineral deficiency overweight and obesity and diet related non communicable diseases and globally around 2 billion people are under nourished they are malnutrited having a deficiency of one or the other nutrient so this is the, the global scenario and if we look at our situation this is the data of 2022 the latest one the global hunger hunger index we are ranked 107 among 121 countries and have been placed in serious category in terms of the global hunger index which is not a healthy sign for a country like india and the undp data says that about 16.4% of indian population that is living in poverty 4.2% is in severe poverty and another 8.7% are likely to be engulfed by the poverty so if we add the three figures 30% of the population is still facing this this problem 
they are still struggling with the food security what to talk about the nutritional security though <clears throat> poverty in india fell by 415 million in 15 years but still we are the toppers having maximum poor which has been published by the global multi dimensional poverty index which revealed that the covid 19 pandemic has set progress in reducing poverty back by 3 to 10 years so it is another challenge as i was looking today at the newspaper uh, the government of tamil nadu yesterday the chief minister knows his team for the infants and the mothers having some uh, micronutrient supplements so this is the ill effect of the imbalancing which has been done not today but couple of decades back showing its ill effects today and we are the culprits yesterday and tomorrow if not addressed you guys will be the, the players who who did it at the problem <clears throat> looking at the global scenario <clears throat> now the population is at present about 8 billion by 2050 it will touch 9.7 billion with regard to the food grain production it is at present 2.1 billion tons and by 2050 we need 3.3 billion tons but the alarming situation is we are already 2 billion what will happen by 2050 if the same scenario continues where these young infants will go what will happen and the sustainability goals of united nations they say we need to end hunger and achieve food security improve the nutrition and also promote the sustainable agriculture these are the course given we need to go address these issues are we doing so really doing so probably no if we look at the indian scenario there are many many constraints and one is the decreasing per capita land availability which which has already gone down to 1.1 hectare from 3.4 hectare in 60 this is a clear cut indication that we need to produce more and more food with the squeezing or the shrinking land hold that means we need to put more inputs maybe organic maybe inorganic but we need to address this issue by adding more and more nutrients <clears throat> that's what we are doing we have already test 150 kg per hectare the npk when i am talking about the fertilizers mind it this is the the npk only i i wouldn't say it that the majority of the the research was focused on the major nutrients of course when we achieved the food security even or we, we became food sufficient even then npk were the top priority and even today these are the top priority uh, we need to shift our mindset to other nutrients that's why uh, probably we are facing the the problem the addition of more nutrients the introduction of high yielding varieties then if so then there are 100% chances of increased incidences of diseases pests insects and weeds etc etc we need to increase the the agricultural area under irrigation by over exploiting the the ground water and the in northern states if you look at the data punjab and haryana probably they are the, the leaders in over exploiting the natural resources the ground water has gone down to 700 800 feet every year they are deepening the deepening the bore wells 
to extract more and more water. How long? The alarming situation. That's why even Punjab government has to has to bring a legislation in the, the cabinet that you Punjab cannot grow two rice crops. They were growing in April, transplanting in April, then second crop in July, August. Two crops. So they, they brought a legislation that uh, during the first week of June, only transplanting will be allowed. It was the, the purpose was that uh, after 15th June, you can expect the showers, monsoon showers. So that will reduce the, the uh, pressure on the groundwater. So this is the situation somehow uh, either humans are so greedy, we are not bothering about the natural resources or it is the food demand which is compelling us to grow more and more. Uh, these are questionable questions, the thought provoking one. Then the mechanization in agriculture. All these has to play a key role in enhancing the food grade production in the country. If we look at the, the fertilizer consumption, it increased from 61 to 2019 by 15 times. By 15 times. And conversely, the food grain production, which include the major food grains, the rice, wheat, maize, but also oats, rye, the, the other food grains, sorghum, buckwheat, and mixed grains. So it increased only three times. So the, the addition of the fertilizers is not in a proportion of the, the increase in production. So there is some problem mismatch between the addition and, and this is again, I'm, I'm sharing again, this is NPA only, no other nutrients. <clears throat> That's why the fertilizer consumption with every passing year is on a rise. Same is true for the, the pesticide consumption. We do say that uh, we are uh, getting all the vegetables irrespective of the season. We call it race time. Uh, I was in Anand. Uh, couple of years back, I asked the micronutrient expert that you are testing the residues in the vegetable. So which one you found most contaminated one with respect to the foliar spray, the supplies uh, to control the diseases and then he said on an average, 80 sprays are done on the itself. Most contaminated one. And in North, it is most preferable, usually junk food. So we can, we can look at how we are moving to jump in the market early. We are moving against time. To jump in the market in the late season, we are moving against time. I don't know where we are moving, but these are some of the, the alarming situation we are having that has been uh, highlighted through many publications that uh, the over addition of uh, the nitrogen and phosphorus in the last half century has shifted the hotspots and created the nutrient imbalances, which is bringing with it many <coughs> impacts such as, uh, can I get a water here? The degradation of land, is a major challenge which is bringing with it many many other issues such as eutrophication acidification salinization all these are degrading if we, we are not balancing the inputs in soil and that imbalance has entered in the human chain now human body and we are also uh, facing the same music we always say that uh, for again for major nutrients there has to be a, there is an ideal ratio for is to one for and the right you know 
<clears throat> Ever touch this ratio, probably no. It is always in favor of nitrogen. And the reasons are known to one and all. The, the support, the government policies, the availability, there are so and so. There are many, many issues which are responsible for this. So against at present even, uh, this ratio is again distorted in favor of the nitrogen. And uh, that's why everybody is uh, compared to say, we are in urea, right? Because of this imbalance in, in favor of these, uh, in favor of nitrogen and addressing only three elements, there is already imbalance of 8 to 10 million tons in spite of huge addition of uh, the NPK in 2015 and will further go to 15 million tons by 2025. So, the addition in spite of the huge addition, it is, it is bound to happen that the fertilizer consumption has to be increased to match the crop productivity to feed the ever increasing mass. So, this is one issue, the food security, not the nutritional security, right? Because the focus again is on these three major nutrients. <clears throat> That's why, because of this imbalance, we moved to such a situation that this ladder is, is increasing every year in terms of the increased deficiency of nutrients. We started in 50 with nitrogen, and you can look at probably none of the 18 nutrients, essential nutrients, they would be finding a place in this ladder in the years to come. <clears throat> what could be the possible reason of decline? All of us are aware that uh, there are 18 essential nutrients categorized as macro and micro. Somehow, knowingly, unknowingly, these are finding a place as by default you are having sufficiency of calcium. We are having sufficiency of aluminium, right? <laughs> Which is otherwise not, not a uh, element to be considered very good. But what about these? All these are questionable not finding favor in even today in the policy we do speak about fortifying something 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 but if you look at the when, when we frame the policy we say target one element it should be area specific it should be location specific so uh, the policy should include all these nutrients until unless they are included probably we will hover around what what is happening and what has happened That's why when these are not being addressed, we are shrinking day by day. <clears throat> now coming to the micronutrients, the global scenario is also being followed by India. Zinc, most deficient. We are also having a deficiency maximum extent of zinc followed by boron than the other elements. And uh, probably these nutrients are being added in the proportion of their deficiency. The Indo-Gazetic plain people, they say that the zinc deficiency has gone down. It was 49% because of the continuous addition of zinc sulfate and uh, that has reduced the deficiency now. <clears throat> That's a healthy sign. But the alarming situation is that the, the zinc sulfate, 70% is being consumed by only five states. So again, the deficiency is not confined to five states. It is spread 
across the uh, country so that is that is something to be thought of very seriously that uh, knowingly or unknowingly these are not being added in proportion of their deficiency or people are unaware of the deficiency of such nutrients <clears throat> we say <clears throat> there are 18 elements nobody was aware about about the zinc code but probably covid era taught us many lessons and the, the significance of zinc in enhancing the immune system was amply demonstrated with zinc code boro nobody knows everybody is aware that uh, calcium is needed for uh, bones phosphorus is needed for bones if you go to doctor I have joint pain he will ask you go for calcarea pause right but boron is equally important for healthy bones availability of nitrogen is governed by the molybdenum so what is uh, talking about molybdenum right so being a student or soil scientist we need to think on these lines how these are interrelated a little quantity with multiple benefits we need to address those so <clears throat> when looking at what i whatever i have said then we are sure that our soils are deficient in one or the other nutrient and the food stuff we are producing is not rich in all the nutrients that food we are consuming the animals that they are consuming the milk and the milk products we are using that has entered in our food chain that's why we are compelled to consume folic acid the zinc covid or something or something or food supplements that's why i was setting an example yesterday the chief minister of tamil nadu also even the the kids between six months and six years they were covered in the scheme even the mothers even the kids and the, the micronutrient supplements that speaks the, the importance of micronutrients. We say we have the proteins that you can have either through the chicken or the mutton or the fish or the cheese. <clears throat> but from here you will get the zinc. Right? So these, these are to be addressed given the due weightage, due importance, what they deserve with respect to the human health. So, when soils are poor, we cannot expect the food to be rich. And, as I mentioned, <coughs> over 2 billion people are already the sufferer of the micronutrient deficiency. For that reason, we need to have the sustainable soil management for healthy soils, healthy food, and healthy humans. By not a, an individual approach, but by combining different aspects, such as the ensuring the crop rotation, keeping the soil surface covered, then minimizing the tillage, increasing the soil organic carbon content, and of course, addressing the all the 18 nutrients which are essential for a healthy crop. If so, then mind it, the food stuff produced by such interventions will be enriched having both the components, increased yield with enrichment of all the nutrients and same and will be consumed by the humans will have ensure the nutritional security. <clears throat> then I will come to some of the work we did at Palapu. This will give you an overview of what you are doing, how differently we are working. And let me start with that. We are in a contrast situation, what you have to do. We are somewhere in temperate, you are in tropical. So the soil differences you can expect we are based at less than 5.5 years, you are 7.5 plus. So the contrasting situation with respect to the availability of the nutrients. But 
It is said that the micronutrients availability is better than the acid conditions. If so, then the application of those nutrients should run response. And it is happening. Even zinc you apply, it, it will respond. So there, there, there is, uh, there is, we need to think seriously whether the limits, critical limits we are following across the country are holding true even today or there is something wrong. <clears throat> so we are, with respect to zinc availability, uh, we are the borderline case. 0.5556 ppm. So uh, we were having a pro uh, novel product which is uh, zinc metallosate to be tested against the conventional sources, uh, which we are otherwise using. It is zinc metallosate, a patented product of US, which was launched in India for its uh, testing its efficacy. It is exclusively designed for the foliar application. Consider its higher use efficiency. So, before moving further, I would like to emphasize here that uh, the role of addition of organics to any source is paramount. We cannot ignore it. And looking at uh, these, uh, this data, it says that where you added along with the NPK on the FYM, it outlived all of the treatments. The addition was only the, the FYM at 20 ton per hectare. So <clears throat> the response of FYM was much better than what you applied. So that means there, were, there may be deficiency of some other nutrients, but our target elements was only zinc. But because of the the scarcity in the coming years, even today, of the availability of FYM is becoming questionable whether we will be able to meet out the requirement with respect to FYM. It is really a questionable question because cows who are to produce the FYM are on the road. The moment they stop making, then they are on the road. So uh, I don't know how, how it would work. <clears throat> so if FYM is not available, then what we found that the noble product that is zinc metallosate it has had an edge over the, the soil application at recommended rate to suppress foliar sprays. So foliar spray has an advantage against the, the soil application. <clears throat> but when we calculated the economics of uh, this experiment, it was not in favor of the noble product, which was having an edge over the other sources. Reason being that it was a new product yet to find a place in the FCO. So probably it will be fine time they are introduced now. And hope PLA will get this soon for testing. <clears throat> As I was mentioning that uh, we are the borderline case uh, with respect to zinc availability, we tested the increased concentration uh, as foliar separate effort for five years. And what we found that uh, in spite of having the, the addition in soil, the availability is a question. That's why the increased concentration of zinc sulfate responded over the years in enhancing the, the apple yield over the years. Yeah, probably a lot has been spoken about the biofortification. We did detail work, so I will not emphasize much. You are leader in this. I, I will not say, but we though we screened for wheat, then for mage and for cauliflower. Uh, this is one of the option. Uh, the green BGS was saying that uh, we need to fortify it. So this is this is a very good approach. Need to be promoted, and breeders have a, have a role to play in between. Uh, let's not work in isolation. If they are able to to transfer that uh, gene, which is more accumulator of that uh, that particular nutrient, probably uh, many issues will be solved. And uh, we can we can uh, develop such varieties which can be location specific, which, which can be area specific. So this is this is an area of research 
to be promoted for enhancing the nutrient content with the, the crop production that is agronomically efficient as well as the genetically efficient genotypes need to be identified and need to be uh, promoted in areas having deficiency of a particular nutrient, targeting that nutrient. <clears throat> the frequency of application of a particular nutrient, whether we need to apply it every year, we do say that soil application for micronutrient is better than it was, it's better than the full year application because of the, the efficiency of problem of micronutrient. So we take it two to five percent, maximum five percent. If so, then the residual impact of the soil applied micronutrient will have a positive impact on the succeeding crop. That's why the soil application was always advocated. But the actual availability, in spite of having sufficient content, is positive. As I cited the example of zinc, we do have, you do have the, the calcium sufficient. If you apply, you apply zinc some, two zinc some, adding something and calcium, even then it is responded. So there, there is something to be looked into. We need to read between the lines what is exactly happening. So we we did an experiment for six, six years applying three frequency once in six years, then in alternate years, then regular every year addition of zinc in maize wheat cropping system and two maize only. And what we found <clears throat> that when we have to apply zinc regularly every year, the, the dose has to be 5 kg per hectare. When it is to be applied in alternate years, it has to be 7.5 kg per hectare. And surprisingly, uh, I am sharing it that we, we submitted this paper in the field crop research without any objection, it was first time. Accepted with it, it was really something very otherwise entry of a paper. Thank you very much. Entry entry in field crop research of paper normally takes one year. <clears throat> and based on that, what I am talking about, we figured out against 0.6 ppm, you are also following the same limit, right? 0.6 milligram per kg is the critical value of same. All of us are You are not following here? 0. 0.85. So you are, we are, we are lagging. 0. 0.85. We are following it as 0. 0.6. So against 0. 0.6, it has to be 1.55. So you can look at, that's why we are getting the response. But what I feel that uh, this is this is the absolute value. Same as SCCR, the people they say that they take the absolute value. The lacuna between the general recommendation and SCCR that if it is 499, then it is medium, if it is 501, then it is high. Okay, then the goes about 200 and 400 will be safe. So for micronutrient also, let's not go by the absolute value that has been raised. As we included in the we published uh, this data categorizing the micronutrient in six categories. If the value is say 0.4, then you need to add this. If it is 0 0.4, 0 0.8, that's why complete omission of these nutrients considering a single value is another reason for non-addition of such nutrients which is again causing that imbalance. This is a data from uh, the long-term fertilizer experiment you have here. So uh, again, the uh, it has completed five decades where we are adding the organics is maintaining the higher content of the starch, the, the quality parameters that signifies the importance of addition of the farmyard manure. Then we tested the boron, as boron is bound to be deficient in acid soils. We are based in high rainfall areas, leaching is one issue which is causing problem uh, of boron. 
So we tested it with the, the two sprays, three sprays, with the half of the recommended, then recommended, and 1.5 times of the recommended with the soil application and without soil, soil application. So either of these, either soil application alone or foliar application alone, were not sufficient. So joining these two, soil application coupled with either two or three foliar sprays were found the, the best option for enhancing the the corn yield. <clears throat> and same was the pattern for the boron uptake, where we conjointly added these, the uptake also increased. As is evident from the fully filled cobs we got from the treatments where we applied this. <clears throat> and this uh, uh, noble product was in two formulations, one was zinc, another was uh, Boron. So boron also behaved similarly. However, the NPK and FYM outlived the rest of the treatments. But among these, the the use efficiency that came out around eight to ten percent. So if we, as we are countrywide, saying that uh, irrigated areas have enough has been harvested, exploited, over exploited, if we could make a dent by increasing the uh, Yield in rain flood areas by 5 to 10 percent, there is no need of another green revolution. It will automatically bring the green revolution. That's why this year the, the coarse grains have been given the due importance. Again, same reason for its poor economic performance. <clears throat> This is again biofortification of uh, the uh, cauliflower genotypes for boron efficiency. Yes, <clears throat> we always say that the sufficiency and deficiency of micronutrients is very important. We have to determine what will happen. Everybody is to say you become toxic. What, how toxic? What will happen to the plant? We we conducted an experiment of went up to 75 kg boron, not to make for the boron. We ingressed a huge bit of city, and uh, it was very interesting to, to know that uh, we encountered three situations after 30 kg the plants replanted maybe 10 times. Somehow those who are hardy one day say sustained. And we encountered three situations after 30 kg. Either the, the curd formation was not there. If at all, then it was very slow. And it distorted nest. So three situations, however, the lower doses of 1.5 or 2.5 kg, they produced the attractive color in the same experiment. And based on that, we figured out that uh, the addition of uh, the boron in acid soil should be at the rate of 2.7 kg. Same is true for calcium. <clears throat> when we combined calcium with boron, it, it had better response than the boric acid or the boron metallosate. Not only this, but it enhanced the, the quality parameters in terms of the TSS. So, <clears throat> such little steps are are the, the really needed to, to ensure the food as well as the nutrition and reaching the food stuff with the nutrients which are there and uh, ensuring the food as well as the nutritional security. Another option can be the seed priming where the plant need little, the seeds need little of the micronutrients or any nutrient. So, but it has to be figured out how long and what concentration you want to find the seeds. For that reason, we, we tested the, the lady finger. It, has, it was purposely selected because it has this hard seed coat. People pray. So, 0.05% boron concentration was found optimum, but it is a questionable question whether that little amount. In field condition at later stages will be sufficient to meet out the crop requirement or not. 
if no, then how to cope up? Then we believe it will be four years of prayer. So four years of prayer responded well when the interaction impact of the seed priming with the duration it was seen that then the 0.05 for 24 hours and 0.1 percent for 36 hours they were the best combinations to be taken to the field condition for and coupled with two foliar sprays of grown at 0.034 percent. The, the least studied element is modern gene. And you are probably uncomfortable to one. We are highly uncomfortable with this element. <laughs> Let me share. I conducted one experiment with 20 genotypes of uh, uh, broccoli, and all were so heavily infested with the molybdenum deficiency that nothing could be could be harvested. This is the state of affairs. So the general recommendation is one kg. I was apprehensive whether it will, it will happen here or not. So. Moving safely, we tested it with the FYM, the nine to enhance the, increase the pH, then the soil plus the foliar application. So what we found that joining the three components, the NPK and FYM, coupled with the soil application and the foliar application, two and three, they are equally effective in enhancing the, the curd yield. So, Again, the sole soil or the foliar application, they are not responding well. Not only this, with the addition of molybdenum, the uptake of the nutrients, micronutrients that increased. Little addition of one kg or two kg enhanced the enriched the food stuff, a step towards the nutritional system. Same is true for the quality content, the ascorbic acid that also followed the same pattern. Then encouraged by the, the first experiment, we went up to 20 kg. Addition of molybdenum. This year also I conducted the experiment. I, I failed to understand last year it responded up to 5 kg. This year 20 kg plot was best. Uh, I, am, I am speechless now. What to do? What happened to how 20 kg, 20 kg, and 5 kg they were, they were compared? Uh, I don't know where to go now. So, <clears throat> looking at this data, application up to 5 kg responded, but beyond this, there was decline in. So, somewhere around 5 kg, it is the optimum dose. It also increased the, the quality parameters with respect to the TSS and the other nutrients in the same treatment where we, we applied these nutrients with uh, at uh, up to 5 kg. <clears throat> and based on that, against 1 kg, the dose of the it was worked out to be 5.7 kg. So, but here, if you calculate the economics, probably half kg of Ammonium molybdenum is costing 75. There is good commercial grade. Dr. Rana Day, I approached him many times, he's not cooperating. So, so from here we will get the but this is this is a very very ticklish element to be considered. So I will not uh, move further than I will conclude that these nutrients in boron and molybdenum. Uh, application positively, positively impact both the quantity as well as quality of the agriculture produce. Efficacy of uh, both the nutrients, zinc and uh, boron, is influenced by the genotypic variation at similar application rates, and optimum zinc, boron, and molybdenum rates are above the recommended level. That is demanding the revisiting or refixing the critical mass for or the, the ratings for starting from nitrogen to tail elements that is more important. We need to revisit. <clears throat> That's why the conjoint soil and foliar applications at critical crop growth stages, they are responding well. 
and enhancing the crop productivity uh, and quality through biofortification is a sustainable and economically viable option. I will conclude with the statement that micronutrients, though needed in very small quantity, but need the macro attention for ensuring the food and nutritional security. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity.